My name is Ingeborg de Rode. I'm curator for industrial design at the Stedelijk Museum in Amsterdam. My name is Willem van Roosmalen. I'm the chief editor and owner of Fontanel, which is the Dutch creative platform. We recently published our first book called Dutch Design Talents. Dutch design uh, normally only means design from the Netherlands, but of course nowadays we use Dutch design as a design uh, beginning in the 1990s in the Netherlands and which came uh, to a well, international height in the mid-90s. Well, for um, the development of this kind of Dutch design, I think the, the academies were very uh, important in the Netherlands. What we hear from uh, students and both companies is uh, we kind of recognize the same problem, only from a different perspective. So we heard from students that they didn't really feel prepared either working for a bus or uh, uh, starting their own company. So when I uh, finished my uh, education, uh, I went to Arnhem. In Arnhem, at Leerdokaal, they have a craftsmanship. And that's where you can um, get some exact classes into um, working with leather. Uh, I studied uh, fashion design at the Amsterdam Fashion Institute and I specialized in 3D and 3D means uh, graduating with a collection. Yeah, I went to uh, college to, to learn uh, how to make furniture. So I did the study for furniture maker and yacht builder. Um, but I didn't want to do it in my whole life, so that's why I went to university to study industrial design. So then, yeah, you have two things together that you can make it here in a workshop and you know how the machine works. In my study I learned a lot about the big companies, the multinationals, how they act, how they grow worldwide. I was a little bit, uh, I think, against it to work for like a big multinational uh, at the end because I knew that it would be like a number of thousands to work for. After hotel management I really wanted to do art school and then interior architecture. But they kept telling me, oh but maybe you have to choose fashion or maybe you are better in graphic design. So after two years I thought, I don't know anymore. I just don't want to be focused only on interior design but also fashion and graphic design I really liked and so I actually quit. That's it. <laughs> That's my education. I think it's very important that we have many um, design uh, departments in art schools because it's, you know, the, the, the boundaries are, are really blurring more and more and I think it's, it's very good for students to have those influences in, in their schools. Uh, I did learn a lot on my, on my own, just reading books, uh, watching YouTube movies from the, from the bags, but I, I couldn't do it without school because they teach you how to draw patterns and really how to look at uh, designs and making concepts and they really teach you the whole package. Well, in, in my experience, and, I, and that's only the Dutch creative industry, and I can imagine for some profession it is really important to have an education and a PhD, uh, as in medicine and law. Um, but in the creative industry, it isn't really. And I know uh, people that uh, graduated cum laude from art schools that work at the same uh, agencies as people that didn't even start an education and just learned everything by themselves. It's also nice to learn it along the way by yourself and by uh, and just getting in touch with the right people that can help you uh, to grow. Yeah, you just don't need to know everything by yourself. What I I do wish at school uh, is that the classes could have been more variety. Luckily I took some uh, different uh, internships, therefore I learned a lot, a lot of different directions into fashion, but I think in school I, I thought that could, it could have been better. It could have been a better preparation also for after school. What are you gonna do? How are you gonna start your business? And, it's not really promoted actually. I was just like, oh, I'm thinking now about industrial design and your university. Yeah, you have the brains and you know how to design something, but you're, you're not going somewhere in the world and then say, okay, I'm an industrial design designer. Who can hire me? That's yeah, not really, yeah. <laughs> that's not, that's not, they promote that. But now you're doing it, they're coming back from university. Okay, guys, well done. Uh, could you tell us more? How did you do it? 
So I think for schools it's really important to set the right expectations, saying like this, these four years are the years that you can develop yourself and train yourself and um, learn a craft and stuff that's really important. Um, and I do think they need to learn more, as in uh, entrepreneurship and networking, all that kind of stuff. But also setting expectations, like this is just the beginning. Uh, you're, you're not supposed to be prepared. Um, it's a good thing that you're not prepared and it's a good thing that you're fresh and new and young. Sometimes I think when I, uh, when I really learned from an apprentice how to make bags that I would see more problems and that I wouldn't push myself into making different things. So, for example, then I would say, okay, well, the backpack, it's a bit too hard to get the shape in the, in the top part, so I would do it differently. But because I don't know the technique, I just did it and then I come up with my own technique. If you want to build your own company, you suddenly need to have um, an understanding of so much more than just your product. You need to sell it, you need to build a community, you need to publish content, you need to do finance, you need to hire people. Uh, there are so many other um, services and software as a services that are helping you and kind of guiding you through how to do that. Just by using the software, I learn about how to do support. And just by using uh, the accountancy software uh, we use, uh, I learn about finances. And I think that that's what makes it really easy for creatives or people in general that want to start their own company um, and hire staff. It, it's, it's easier than ever because there are so many services and products out there that help you do that, uh, which normally uh, meant you had to uh, hire experienced people to set up that kind of stuff. And if you ask me um, if you can only be a Dutch designer uh, when you um, were trained at a Dutch academy, I don't think that's the case. Because nowadays um, the design world is so very international, that was really not the case at the beginning of the 90s, you cannot really talk about Dutch design in that sense anymore. You know, uh, in designers from all over the world are working all over the world. Is it necessary or not education? I don't think, for some it is and some for some it isn't. I don't think um, having no education is better than having one. I just think it depends on um, what kind of person you are and, and, and in what kind of um, environment you thrive best in. You have to be, uh, how do you say it, uh, interested in a lot of things if you have that from yourself you don't always need a school. A school can maybe like, um, how do you say it? It can push you in a certain direction and they can help you out a lot, but there are a lot of uh, artists who didn't have an education and they were very eager to learn and who had taught themselves how to do it. So I think there's a lot of ways to get to that, same, that, to that same point. You just have to want it. Nothing is impossible if you want it just hard enough, right? <laughs>